Okay, so the Muslim guys I've met say they feel singled out and they're distrustful post 7 7. What about other Asians? What's happened to their sense of identity? Today I'm in Leeds city centre for the Sikh festival of Asahi. Today I'm in Leeds city centre for the Sikh festival of Asahi, the 307th anniversary of the first time someone was initiated as a Sikh. It's a very important day of celebration in our religion. I've come here to find out if the concept of a shared Asian identity I've always held has any meaning for young Sikhs in the 21st century. You find yourself defending yourself so much more. You find yourself defending yourself as Indian. You find yourself defending yourself as a Sikh or a Punjabi and putting in the boundaries and differentiating yourself. And it's a sad from, tale. From, from Muslims, basically. From Muslim, from Asian. This huge banner of Asian, which is so complicated and is so... It's, it's a really strange and difficult title because Asian to me, if someone says Asian, I immediately think I'm personal. Oh, 7 7, all of that stuff. Do you think it's affected relationships and identities between uh, Sikhs and Muslims? Yes, especially after 7 7, the t shirts which are Don't Freak, I'm a Sikh. Don't Freak, I'm a Sikh. Yeah. All right, just like Don't Panic, I'm Islamic. Yeah. But the whole idea was Don't Freak, I'm a Sikh was that, you know, every brown person after 9 11, after 7 7, you immediately became a threat. You immediately became somebody who was out to damage in all the world. And it was trying to like present yourself as good and just. Okay. You know? And set yourself apart. Which is what the Muslim community did, because the Muslim community will always come out and say, you know, they're not doing it in the name of Islam. Yeah. Which is totally fair. And just as much as they distance themselves, we want to segregate. So in a sense, we're still worried. We're still concerned about how white people perceive us. And we know we're still a minority. And we know we're still within danger, which is why we do that. By chance, I've met a young man who lives in Beeston, the area of Leeds I was turned away from. What was Beeston like just after the bombs? It was, for a few months we didn't really go out. It you was didn't all, go out? No. Why? Just afraid, I think. And it, it was just didn't seem right. And Beeston was just all over the news every day. And I think a lot of the people just weren't happy with the way it was put straight. I played football with him. Who did you play football with? I can't remember the names. We never, everyone had a nickname, so it was just, you know, like um, there's a park in Beeston, and everyone so gathers on that park in the summer, so you just like join in with them. I think I saw them a few weeks earlier before they'd done it, and it just, it just felt weird. We were all like shocked that it was our area. It's, it's like, they were about my age, I think, probably, so no, it wasn't right. Naminda says he still plays football with his friends in the same park and will ask if they'll agree to meet me and have a kickabout. Perhaps they'll talk on camera. But I'm starting to wonder why I want to go to Beeston at all. Would I be behaving like all the other journalists who just want a sexy story? Here I am, right in the heart of the community that bred the suicide bombers, playing football on the actual pitch they set foot on. I'm starting to feel a bit creepy about it all. A friend of mine, who I was very close to, who, who's, who takes his politics really seriously and takes Islam really seriously. I spoke to him yesterday because I wanted to make some sense out of some stuff for this program and uh, he basically told me, and we've known each other 10 years, that everything that I was and everything that I believed in has now gone, that I have become one of them, that I'm a puppet on a string for the people who are out to get the Muslims, that there are only two sides now. You're either with the Muslims or you're against them. And by making this program, I'm against the Muslims. Why? I said, he said, because every program about Islam is going to be against the Muslims. Every program on the main channels is going to be against the Muslims. What he said was, you're not making this program. This ain't author, this ain't your program. Channel 4 pulling your strings, you're a puppet. You are a puppet. So this is my challenge, to try and dig deeper into the community and understand if my perception of Generation 7-7 is right. When I started this film, I thought there was a growing divide between Asians in Britain along religious lines. But now I realise that's part of my problem. I was naive in thinking that as a Sikh, I still have insight into the British Muslim population. It was probably even more naive to think that as a member of the media, I'd still be welcomed with open arms by my Asian brothers. For the past few weeks, I've been trying to find someone to talk to me and having very little luck. 
Some people have told me off camera that they can see why the London bombers might have done it. But when I've asked to film them, I keep coming up against comments like, no way, bruv, I don't know what you could do with what I say, man. I could end up in Guantanamo Bay. Stuff like that. Luckily, someone's taken pity on me and I've been invited for a meal with a good old-fashioned Yorkshire family. Six hours in the car. I feel like I've gone insane. They're a Yorkshire family, like I said, but don't expect I've driven this long for roast beef and Yorkshire pud. I'm happy because I think I'm going to get a great Pakistani Kashmiri meal and some good food for the mind as well. Hello. Hello. Yeah, well, it turns out they watched the Channel 4 news piece about Riz and his post 9 11 blues. It sounds like quite a humorous, jokey type, yeah. tongue in cheek type. That's what I mean. I mean, it's satire, really. You know, it's, it's quite dark humour uh, used to explain quite a serious subject. And now it's become a new story. He portrayed a British man held captive at Guantanamo Bay and was then detained on his return to the UK after the film's premiere. Now Rizwan Ahmed is generating fresh controversy with the lyrics of a new song satirising the security climate after the September 11th terror attacks. What can I do? I got the post 9-11 blues on the telly, nothing but the post 9-11 news. More negative than positive, sort of the response that you got from the listeners. Oh no, it was 90% positive, which was really interesting. Some people texting in and just saying, how can you use humour on such a serious subject? But the majority of people was just like, that's amazing, it's never been done before. It was a good time, you know, because it's relevant to identity, isn't it? Yeah. Hello, Uncle G. How are you? No, not like this. Oh, uh, OK, I get a, I get a jumpy. Have you suffered the post-9-11 blues? When September the 11th first happened, I did feel really down about it. And, yeah, it was really, it was really sad. The way that other people kind of... You felt like they were treating you differently. Even yeah. if they weren't, you do become paranoid. But realistically, on, I'm not suffering any type of blues, to be honest. I don't feel like I'm being discriminated against on a day-to-day -day basis. People expected it to affect you, and they kept going on, so how do you feel now it's after 9-11? And you know, That's have you what been, I'm doing tonight. Have you been discriminated against? Do people shout things at you in the you street? No more than they did it's before. A question to ask. Some of the young brothers I've been speaking to and uh, mm. about all of this stuff, they've said, we know why. Those guys went out and did 7-7, seven, seven. we know it's wrong, we'd never do anything like that ourselves, but there is so much injustice raging throughout the world, it affects some people like that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> why do you think the guys from 7-7, seven, seven, why do you think they did it? People expect Muslims to be able to explain this. Why should we, we're not murderers, yeah. right? We're not, we're not uh, the kind of people who would go and do that. And four people out of 1.6 million Muslims have committed a criminal act. I don't feel responsible for them. I, I don't see yeah. why I should feel responsible. Okay, they're Muslim, but you know, there's a whole, there are a whole load of other thing, reasons why they might have gone and done that. I know a lot of people that said they knew the people quite well, and they you used knew to. One of the guys I used to go, I used to go swimming on Sundays or Saturdays with one of the guys in uh, Armley Baths, and okay. it's just it, it was a really good guy. But I mean, I wouldn't expect anything like that to be, you know, mm. for him to, to mm. do something like that. But you know, there's another thing about these four guys and about the 9-11 bombers. It's a question that you're not even allowed to ask, actually, is did they really do it? You know, did they really do it? I mean, Sounds, if, you, mm. if you look at the Brazilian guy who was shot how many times in the head? Eight, I thought it was eight Nine times. times. If there hadn't been a public inquiry, would we have found out what we found out about him? The first two days after the news, it's almost like lies compared yeah. to... Mm. That's yeah. right. Why hasn't there been a public inquiry on the 7-7 bombings here? It was a major national event. Shouldn't there have been a, an inquiry? You know, it, it just makes you wonder what is really going on, and I think people just feel they don't know what to believe now. Even September the 11th, they managed to find the passport of apparently one of the bombers. The Quran. In this mass, uh, the Quran. <laughs> because Quran. somebody who's going to blow themselves up would take a Quran with them, obviously, because, you know, it's like the manual <laughs> terror. <laughs> In Arabic. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, it's just like, how did you find a passport in this massive pile of rubble where they can't even survive. find bodies know. or paper? They can't find anything that they can find a passport on a Quran. <laughs> okay, so I'll admit I'm a little surprised. 